Greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome to episode nine of the uh, First Messianic Ministry of Nashville Incorporated, Daryl's Dream Audio Sermons. Welcome to episode nine. Uh, I apologize if there's static or something like that inside the, um, this particular audio. I am coming to you live, which I'm taking a risk coming to you live. Um, also... Uh, I just am not sure if uh, I've tried to, to check with my microphone and with my sound equipment. And um, when I pre-record, I get uh, um, static or my voice either gets static or morphed. I don't know if it's because recording speed. I have absolutely no idea. You know, I'm still a little new at this. Um, but I apologize for that. Let us start with come with me into your bibles um read with me into your bibles let us start at matthew chapter 6 verse 9 with the lord's prayer and enter into this with a personal prayer or personal prayer amongst us listeners and it reads starting in verse 9 you therefore pray like this our father in heaven may your name be kept holy May your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the food we need today. Forgive us what we've done wrong as we too have forgiven those who have wronged us. And lead us not into hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. For kingship, power, and glory are yours forever. Amen. For if you forgive others their offenses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their offenses, your Heavenly Father will not forgive yours. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the sweet name of Jesus Christ, just asking you to please lead and guide us and guide, order my steps, order my words, order my thoughts, order everything that I do or say by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit and, and, and in the name of your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, I do not intend to, nor would any of the listeners want to be led astray from you in attempting to hear your word and hear something about what we need to be doing as born-again Christians. So I pray and ask you, Lord, please let every listener receive what they are supposed to receive from this particular episode 9 of this podcast. Okay, brothers and sisters. Uh, this We pray this in Jesus' name. Okay, brothers and sisters. You know, the other day I was talking to a young lady, a sister at work, you know, a sister in Christ, I would say, at work. And um, I asked her a question. I said, you know, do you think that there's a difference between uh, a person who says they accept Jesus Christ into their heart as compared to someone who says, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Um, I asked her, did she think there was a difference in uh, each word, acknowledging Christ or accepting Christ into their heart? She said she didn't notice, she didn't think it was different. She thought it was the same thing. And uh I told her the reason why I asked her the question was because, you know, personally, I've learned over the years of allowing the Holy Spirit to take me from the less wise a Christian that I was and aware, of course, where I had less understanding to personally where I am now in Christ. Um, I, I had asked the Lord, you know, to help me teach about some things and and. During the, my up, up growth and during my maturing, the, the spirit maturing me, I have, I'm going to be honest with you, I've, I've developed this uh, this concern when people say, you know, I accept Jesus into my life as compared to saying I've surrendered all to Jesus and I now acknowledge you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord, which which means master as my Lord and Savior. Now, uh, let me remind you, the reason why I'm speaking so phonetically this way 
is because I checked my sound equipment. And um, for some reason, right now, my sound equipment, I, I'm picking up sirens and all kinds of things. I don't know where I'm picking that up from because I'm out here in the in the wilderness. <laughs> I don't know if uh, something is playing on my Google Chromebook making the, the, those noises or if this microphone is actually picking that up because I have the input volume turned up high with the hopes um, that uh, you can hear me clearly when it comes across on the podcast uh, because uh, a few of my other podcasts the sound quality was very low now what I'm what I'm trying to figure out here now this is crazy but I guess the devil doesn't want this particular podcast to to, um, to go forth so we're going to ignore those sounds okay because I just really honestly do not know where they're coming from but, <laughs> but the Lord knows where they're coming from and maybe the subject matter has something to do with all that interference noise although I'm in the middle of nowhere okay um, so I was I was saying uh, that I'm speaking. I'm sorry if my voice is booming because I also learned that, uh, of course, is the volume input volume is too high. It sounds like I'm warped. That's why I'm speaking so properly. Um, the the best thing you could do is turn your volume down a little bit if I'm coming in too loud, uh, too properly and too loud. And I'm try to keep it quiet like this so that you can hear me clearly. Um, the other thing is, if I were to turn the input volume down too low, which I've done in the past, trying not to have that distorted sound, what seems to happen is that uh, when the podcast when when the podcast comes out and I listen to the podcast on the social media, my voice is too low, and you can't see if you have the if I put the input volume low and you try to turn the volume up, it's only going to go up, but so high. And I've learned, because I'm still learning, I've learned now that even though I have the input volume up very high, it's easier for all of you, if my voice is too loud, to turn down low, lower the volume on your microphone, I mean, on your phone or your radio or whatever, your computer, if you lower the volume, you will be able to hear me clearly, okay? But if I was to lower the input on my mic, um, what happens is you're going to have a hard time hearing my voice. So anyway, like getting back to what I said, so I, I've developed, or the Lord has developed inside of me, I should say, I have a concern when I hear people say, I have accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. And I'm not condemning anybody. You know, the the, the First Messianic Ministry of Nashville Incorporated, you know, the ministry, we do not condemn. But I must not uh, get caught up in preaching a fabricated gospel. And if some the Holy Spirit gives me something, I have to tell you, basically what is given me because I mean it's for your benefit as well as for mine so I have a problem with that see I told her I have a problem with that I, I explained to her that it makes more sense to me when a person says um, I have surrendered all to God I acknowledge that Jesus is my Lord and Savior you know it, it, it's saying that I acknowledge all of Jesus. And I explained to as I explained to her, when people say I have accepted Jesus Christ, they've only accepted what they can believe, what they can accept. They've selectively accepted certain things about Jesus Christ, and then they, they, they go off and say, Well, I'm a born, I'm a Christian now. I've accepted Jesus Christ, the love, the agape lover. I've accepted Jesus Christ, the healer. I've accepted Jesus Christ, the wise man. You know, so they're not accepting everything. Let me let me let, me let you in on something. Very rarely do the people who say, 
I've accepted Christ as my Savior, I accepted that word accepted, I asked him, well, did you also accept Jesus Christ, the exorcist? And if you read my topic already, you see what I'm getting at. Did you, have you accepted Jesus Christ, the exorcist? What And also, what do you believe about the Holy Spirit as compared to demonic spirits as we learned about in the four Gospels? And the reason why I'm getting back to that, I remember in, the, in a few past episodes when I told you that I've currently been, been studying um, YouTube marketing. And I'm also going to get into social media marketing. I'm going to get back into to that. I have a, a book on that also where um, because Facebook and Instagram and all these other places, I'm supposed to be a farmer for the Lord planting seeds. And I just can't keep planting seeds on YouTube and expect to be like I scattered seeds all over the place. I'm going to have to plant seeds in Facebook and Instagram and all these other places that, that the Lord is opening up to me. So, um, you know, I asked her, even I asked her, she felt her, she feels herself uh, a devoted Christian. She's been a Christian for a long time. But I asked her about that. I said, have you, when you first came into the gospel, did you say I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Or did you say, I acknowledge him as Lord and Savior of my life? And she said, of course, well, most people say, I accept the Lord as my, my Lord and Savior. And I said, when you accepted him, what about, and I, and I went through the, the same thing I just told you. I said, did you accept Jesus Christ as the healer? Did you accept Jesus Christ as, um, as the uh you know, the great teacher, the savior and all of these things. But well, of course, when I got to, uh, I shouldn't say of course, but most likely when I, when I asked her the question, have you accepted Jesus Christ, the exorcist, you know, the one who cast out demonic spirits and what are your thoughts about demonic spirits? And she stumbled you know, or, or she, she kind of got silent. And the reason why she got silent is because I know this. I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. I know what the situation is. Whenever, remember when I when I spoke to you, you guys about, um, I took the Google Google Trends. And um, Google Trend, I trended to see if the YouTube videos, what was the subject matter of the YouTube videos that concerned speaking about Jesus Christ. And what I got, of course, was the majority of YouTube videos that preach about Jesus Christ, the subject matter has something to do with revelations and the future, the near future, what's going to happen to the economy, what's going to happen to this, this, that, and the other. But very rarely does anyone even go into the Gospels anymore on, on YouTube. I'm not saying no one, but very rarely does anyone go into the Gospels and... If they go into the Gospels, they're usually talking about um, something encouraging you because, especially like the televangelists, they're, they're trying to encourage you to um, put faith in God so that he can increase the, the money that's coming that's in your bank account, but uh, not really showing you the true Gospel, the, the main purpose, not really focusing on uh, salvation and saving other people, you know, being anointed with the Holy Spirit, it's not talking. You know, most people don't even talk about that. What they talk about is money, 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 and keep associating faith in Christ, accept, accepting Jesus Christ, the person who can put a healing on your bank account. But they don't talk about the other things, and they shy away from it a lot of times. Or they don't say anything about it, um, the only time I, I saw TBN speaking anything about demonic spirits and things, unfortunately, was like 2 a.m. in the morning when most people are sleeping. And the reason why they do that is because most people, even if they say they've accepted Jesus Christ, when you start talking about demonic spirits and demon possession, most people today think you've lost your mind. 
and they don't want to. And many, many people who have accepted Jesus into their heart, but do not acknowledge uh, Jesus 100 percent. You know, don't want to get in a conversation about demon possession. They don't want to get into a conversation about that. But um, and so that's why you don't see much of Acts and the book of Acts and the Gospels being preached. Well, there's something wrong with that, of course. You know, uh, I want to go to Matthew chapter 17. But before I go there, you know, I did, we did want to mention this one thing about all of you brothers and sisters out there who um, and even if you, you know, if you consider yourself a brother or sister. And you have accepted Jesus into your heart instead of acknowledged him, everything about him, especially the part about Jesus being the Jesus, the exorcist, um, or anything else about Jesus. It doesn't really have to be Jesus, the exorcist. You know, there's a lot of people who um, have accepted Jesus in their heart, but they don't want to accept that uh, God is still against fornication. There's a lot of people who have accepted Jesus into their heart, but there's a lot of individuals say, I'm a Christian, but God will forgive me for my adulterous ways. There's a lot, many people accepted Jesus into their heart and they, they accept the love in Jesus Christ. They accept all the other things about Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ, uh, the one who said, you know, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, our, our Heavenly Father, who said homosexuality is an abomination. Uh, they've accepted a fabricated Jesus Christ, but they don't want to accept that that's wrong. So there's plenty, plenty of, of so-called brothers and sisters in the faith calling themselves Christian, but saying, declaring that they don't have to turn or be turned from uh homosexual activity and they're declaring that they're Christians they have just every right to be treated as a, a born again Christian hold on just a second I had to turn my radio heater back on <laughs> like when this is live you know we don't have, we, I don't get a chance to uh, cut out the, the bloopers but I really don't want to so um, I'm going to turn to Amos chapter 5 for a minute for those of you brothers and sisters who are, who are, um, we're going to get into Matthew chapter 17, but uh, I just wanted for who are like waiting for the, uh, for the day of the Lord or judgment day to come to prove to yourselves that you properly interpreted the signs and symbols in the book of Revelations. Um, there's a lot of people uh, who... On, on, on YouTube and, and in the United States of America and around the world, you're looking at the things that are happening in, um, oh, uh, stay with me, come with me uh, after this podcast. I'm going to make my second episode of my video cast, uh, the next episode, and we will be getting into more into what's happening in politics and revelations ourselves. I'm not saying that we should not listen to Revel the book of Revelations, but our salvation is more important. And let's see. Um, let's go, with, go, come with me to um, Amos chapter 5. And I'm kind of skimming down. Okay, it's Amos chapter 5, and it starts at verse 18. And I know this is Old Testament, but the people even back then were speaking about, since, you know, Noah, there was a flood with Noah, people knew that there was going to be another one. You know, they had some kind of idea that just like Noah with the flood, there was going to be another end of the world kind of thing. So people were talking about that even back in Amos's day. This is Old Testament, but let's remember what I said last in episode eight. We should learn everything we can about what God said and what God what happened in the Old Testament. But we're supposed to be living in the New Testament, and I'll bring it back there um, in just a minute. But I do want to put this out because there's so many people, like I said, um, on Revelation, on stuck on Revelations and and you uh, puffing yourself up with 
with this knowledge and you come in with these 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 teachings about um this is a sign or symbol for this and the eagle of america and and on and on down the line but hear what the, the word of the lord hear what god has to say about those of you who are so focused on that right now and not focused on on the great commission that we that jesus told us to focus on he says woe to you who want the day of adonai I'm reading out of a uh, complete Jewish Bible, by the way, but, but please read your own version of the Bible. Why do you want it this day of Adonai? He's talking about Judgment Day. It is darkness, not light. As if someone were to run from a lion just to be met by a bear. As if he entered a house, put his hand on the wall, just to be bitten by a snake. Won't the day of Adonai be darkness, not light, completely dark, with no brightness at all? Okay, so what's he saying? He's saying there is that for people who have not acknowledged Jesus as Lord and Savior, and listen carefully, have not surrendered all to Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, will not allow the Holy Spirit confident that Jesus Christ has sent to you to wash away your iniquities and your sinful ways and attitudes, those human beings across the entire planet who have not allowed these things to happen yet, you're so focused on and you hope that that your studies in the book of Revelation about the end times and end days when they come, uh, you want to be so correct about your prophesying about the day that you may not have taken the time to repent, to turn away from your sins. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to wash you, you know, send a comforter who, who will wash you of your iniquities. Or maybe you've asked that question, but when the Holy Spirit came to wash away you started resisting, you know, wash those sinful desires from your heart. You may have started resisting or you are in the habit of resisting every time the Holy Spirit wants to come and wash these things out of you. And you may be saying to yourself, Lord, I'm a Christian. I know I, Paul said I have a thorn in my side, um, but this is just a part of my thorn, Lord. Forgive me, even though I continuously, repeatedly go back to doing certain sinful things that I know is wrong, but I keep doing them anyway. I just can't seem to shake it. Now, we're getting into that. We're going to get into that. But I, I wanted to show you guys what God said here in Amos. Even though it's in the book of Amos, it's God's word. And it's just as relevant today. And I would put it, if I would put it in today, why do so many people want to study the book of Revelations and try to de decipher what the book of Revelations is talking about when you know you haven't turned away from your wicked ways of life. You know you haven't asked the Lord or, or called on the Lord to, or, or maybe you have, but for some reason, you just can't shake it. You just can't stop doing the, the wicked things that you know are destroying you. And, and guess what? Most people who are Christians and say, well, for some reason, I love Jesus and all that other kind of stuff. You know, all the other things that come with Jesus. Um, but I can't seem to shake this desire to go fornicate. I can't seem to shake this desire to go commit adultery and have sex with somebody I'm not married to. I can't seem to shake this uh, desire to go have sex with the same sex. Even though I know your word says that I'm not supposed to be doing these things, Father, why is it that I still have these desires to do it? And then some people have even gone so far as to say, well, Jesus, the Holy Spirit can move these mountains over here. But I guess this is my thorn and this will, will never be removed from me. So... I guess Jesus is just going to have to accept me as I am and just let me walk right into the pearly gates of heaven. I've said that too when I was a young Christian about my fornicative ways. <laughs> and and um, I know, see, I speak about myself. I'm not 
condemning anybody. When it's, this is not about condemnation. This is about growing up and maturing. Like my uh, friend Gloria Emanuel's book, Mature uh, Grow Up Church. And in his book, he's talking about a lot of maturing and things like that. But anyway, um, I can see that I was speaking for 25 minutes. And I'm hopefully like I want to uh, speak in a way of, of, of storyline and not um, too particularly like technical Bible technical talk. I mean, I, I don't want to do that because, you know, most people, you know, talk that way or preach that way. And I don't want to be some kind of cliche preacher, preacher or minister to you. But I will. Let's 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 go ahead. Go to Matthew chapter 17, starting in verse 14. And it says, as they came up to the crowd, a man approached Yeshua, kneeled down in front of him and said, sir, have mercy on my son, because he is an epileptic and has such terrible fits. Now, in King James, it says lunatic. Um, such terrible fits that he often falls into the fire or into the water. Verse 16 says, I brought him to your Talmudim, but they couldn't heal him or they could not heal him. Okay. Verse 17. Yeshua answered or Jesus answered, perverted people without any trust or faith. How long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. Yeshua rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy so that from that moment he was healed. It says here, Then the Talmudim, or the disciples, went to him privately and said, why couldn't we drive it out? He said to them, because you have such little trust or faith. Now, before I make this next statement, I know that you, all of you out there listening, you may, you know, you might have listened to a televangelist. You might have heard your preacher make this next statement. But very rarely is it very rarely. I'm, I'm trying to lower my voice. I see the red lights on my my voice meter, very rarely, I believe, have you heard this statement that Jesus is about to make concerning demon possession, where we see, because we're reading this, that's what Jesus, that's what prompted Jesus to, to make this statement. It has something to do with the disciples not having enough faith to cast out a demon. So he says to them, I tell you that if you have trust as tiny as a mustard seed, you will be able to say to this mountain, move here from here to there, and it will move. Indeed, nothing will be impossible for you. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I, I want to tell you something. A couple of weeks ago, uh, in the hospital, and I, I work at the Veterans Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm a veteran myself, so... I have a rapport with even some of the patients who used to work in the hospital. They're older now, and sometimes some of the, the patients coming in is to my ward are actually people I used to work with, you know. Um, but there's also other people there. I'm not going to name names, but there was there's one particular person uh, at the job who stated that um, that um, they were Roman Catholic. They were Roman Catholic. And, uh, you know, that person usually, the attitude that person has with me, they think I'm crazy because I always talk about the Holy Spirit. And I talk about things like this. What I'm talking to you about right now, I've had conversations about this before. And it was it was around the same time where I saw TBN had um, put the demonic exorcisms on at 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the gentleman, the patient in the bed, um, he began to ask me questions about about Christ because he knows I'm, I'm a minister. And uh, this other person overheard us talking because, um, okay, well, I'm just going to say she because it was a lady. 
she was close by. And I had mentioned to him that in our conversation, it came up that I had mentioned to him that I thought it was, was really sad that TBN would wait. Not that I'm condemning TBN or anything like that, telebroadcasting network. I'm not condemning you guys or anything like that, no. But I thought it was kind of sad that um, so that you would not get sued or so that you are worried about people thinking you're crazy that these episodes or these um, television evangelists who go out or, or, or priests or ministers or, or people of Christ who go out and exercise demons, you, you know, for whatever reason, these programs are not put on prime time, but are on at 2 a.m. in the night. And that's what, what prompted me to think about how, how even amongst Christendom, even amongst Christendom, the discussion about demon possession, the discussion about the Holy Spirit and the anointing and all of that kind of stuff, even among people who say they are Christians, is a taboo kind of subject. Because once you start talking about this, people are going to think you're crazy, even though Jesus, the Savior, when right here you see it, you look at what at your Bible with your own eyes. When the, the man came and said, I brought did my son to your Talmudim or to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. This is concerning demonic spirits and demon possession. Look at Jesus' response to that. Our Savior. I, what did our Savior say? In response to them being unable to. Now I'm not going to sit here and say. That I have the power and all that stuff. Unless God gives it to me. You know. I, I'm i not going to say I don't believe. Or anything like that. But I'm not going to fake anything. As far as I know. You know. Unless God himself will tell me otherwise. He's never given me the power to exercise demons yet. Or maybe he has, and I just don't recognize it because I'm still a human being, and I don't realize maybe, maybe just even bringing this subject up is exercising a lot of demons already, or making the demons angry. <laughs> okay, but our Savior, and see, going back to people who have accepted everything else about Jesus Christ, except Jesus Christ the Exorcist, because you're too afraid to start getting into a conversation about demon possession. Because people are going to start thinking you're crazy. I, I don't mind you think I'm crazy for Christ. But if we're going to be talking about the same Jesus Christ. And we're going to say we have eternal life with Jesus Christ. It should be mean something to you and me. That Jesus got angry when people who should be able to cast out demonic spirits. Don't have enough faith to do so. Or... These days, bringing it back to this time, don't even want to talk about it because you're too worried about somebody thinking you've lost your mind. Now, here's the thing. You either serve in Christ, our Heavenly Father through Christ, or you're serving the devil. If we're Christians, we know this. So why would I want, want somebody full of demons or, or people who are still serving Satan why should I concern myself so much about how if they think I've gone crazy? Jesus is the only one who can give me salvation. Why should I think worry about them? Why should it be an embarrassment for me to boast about my Savior, the Exorcist, and even talk about this subject? <laughs> you know, um, why? You know, if, if anybody out there is listening and you've had a hard time talking about that subject, now let, get back to what he said here. And I know if you've read forward before me, I know you've heard this subject from most televangelists, this statement from most televangelists speaking about financial problems. Okay? He says, yes, I tell you that if you have trust as tiny as a mustard seed... You will be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Indeed, nothing will be impossible for you. Okay? Now, um, I did not look it up, but I know that, that in Luke, the book of Luke, 
this same situation came up and Jesus also made a statement saying, um, but this kind also, um, you need to pray and fast also. Not only just have the mustard seed of faith, but some spirits, it, it requires for us to pray and fast. Pray faithfully and fast faithfully to um, exercise those demons out of our lives. But what I want to ask you now is, have you ever considered, have any of you ever considered out there, those of you who I said earlier, have been struggling with your sinful full nature have you ever considered that that um every sin in the bible you know even luke talks about the demon legion who had many names every sin in the bible has a demonic spirit attached to it have you ever considered that you know i'm pretty sure if if you've been afraid to have a discussion about demonic spirits you probably have not considered that 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 every Every sin, biblical sin, has a demonic spirit attached to it. And what I'm getting at, if I need to specify to anyone, if anybody out there, you're calling yourself a Christian, but you don't understand why uh, that even though the Bible says fornication is wrong, you can't shake it. No matter what you're doing, you can't seem to shake this particular demonic spirit of fornication. You know, there's many demonic spirits out there. One of the demonic spirits I, I like to, to, to let people know exists, that I believe, really believe exists, is uh, the demonic spirit of one-upmanship. That, that's, that's frequently witnessed throughout the Christian body. What am I talking about? See, people say, well, non-denominational, or I am of this denomination, or I am this, and I am that, you know. And, and really what it boils down to, and and some people don't even believe that, um, like like my, I think my, my, my friend Gloria Emanuel in Dongola said, he said in his book, Growing Up, Grow Up Church, he made a statement and said that people don't believe that Christians can be possessed by demonic spirits. Yes, we can. Yes, there is. That's why we're supposed to pray for one another. You know, and I'm in total agreement with him. Yes, we can. That The thing is, before we acknowledged or accepted that Christ is our Lord and Savior, we were full of legions, demonic spirits. Just about everything we did that was sinful in God's eyes, we allowed ourselves to be slave to these demonic spirits. These demonic spirits possessed us to do many things. They say how a child, you know, some people who don't want to talk about demonic spirits or um, uh, they don't understand. They say, well, um, Bad behavior, you know, the scientists like to say a child's bad behavior is something he or she learned because children are born innocent. Yet the Bible tells us children, we all inherited demonic or, or disobedient attitude from Adam and Eve. It's in our genes. It has not been awakened yet. But the Bible tells us that it's in us, our flesh, to do so. Therefore, i.e., we must be born again. Right? from heaven above, in the power and the presence of the Spirit. We need that spiritual anointing if we ever think we're going to have eternal life with Christ. And see, so like I said, these demonic spirits know how to convince us that we don't need the Holy Spirit. We don't need to let these things go. But we know as we grow up, we know that these demonic spirits the demonic spirit of adultery, the demonic spirit of homosexuality, the demonic spirit of the one-upmanship. I got one up on you because, like like I said last week, you know, I got one up on you. You're not as good as a Christian you think you is because cause you don't worship on Saturday like I do. Or you're not as good a Christian as me because you don't speak in tongues like I do. Or you don't charm the snakes like I do. And you don't do this like I do. But you know what you notice? 
since we're talking about demon possession, how many Christians <laughs> out there who take that attitude? Now that's that's what I call the demonic spirit of one upmanship. We we know we're not, we're all of the same body and we're not supposed to be talking to each other that that way. And all of these denominations or whatever, even if you call yourself non-denominate, is like you're trying to slap on something special about yourself. Why Christ holds you in high regard compared to the rest of your Christian brothers and sisters. That you're up here. I'm a Christian, but I'm closer to Christ than you are. And so there, I have something on you. I have one up on you. That's what I call one-upmanship. Because I speak in tongues and you don't, even though you say you're a Christian, you're not as Christian as I am. And, and on and on down the line. That's the deception of the demonic spirit of one-upmanship. Okay, but, you know, I, I know that a lot of you know about Stockholm syndrome, right? Or that 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 syndrome or whatever uh, prisoners in in uh, in prison, they have what's called, you know, like a Stockholm syndrome. People who spent long times in jail when they serve their term, for example, they get put out into the, the world Maybe they haven't been around people for a long time. So what they do is they become afraid to live out in the world or away from jail because they're so used to living in bondage that one of the, the things they do, they can't take it. The stress of actually living free from prison, okay, that the stress from living free from prison is too strong for them. So what they do, a lot of them, they, they will go and deliberately commit a crime that they know will get them put back into the jail system. That's kind of like Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome is, is like, well, the slaves here in the United States, although they were heavily abused by the... Uh, by their slave masters, when they were set free, many of them wanted to stay under the guidance of the slave masters who could no longer guide them anymore because it became against the law to have a slave. So, But they wanted to stay in the masses' good grace because they were afraid. Same thing when Moses took the Israelites out of the desert, out, out, out of Egypt, they knew that the Egyptians were killing them. They cried out to God, God, please save us from this terrible life. And when God came, why did God get so angry when they were walking in the desert? Because God came, he set the Israelites free. But he also had to, they also had to go through a transition before they got to the promised land or they would wind back up in slavery again. So God was trying to, through Moses and Aaron, God was trying to teach a newly freed people how they were going to, going to have to live in order to stay free. The problem, the big problem was Stockholm Syndrome of the Egyptians, I mean of the Israelites, is that the process to get to the promised land from the slave, from being in bondage to the promised land, they couldn't understand why they had to go through all of that. So they began to grumble and grouse about this situation. Every time Moses turned around, they had something negative to say because they didn't understand it. Till one day, some group of Israelites began to say, life in Egypt under slavery was better than the life we're currently living now here in the desert. And what happened is God immediately, as soon as they said something like that, immediately called Moses into the tent. <laughs> and God said, in anger, he said to Moses, I'm about to destroy all these people. And I can understand that after we've done, God has done everything he could do to save people who were crying out to him. Then for them to turn around and say, we was better, 
we made a mistake. We was better off staying in Egypt under slavery. You know, the same thing like a lot of Christian brothers and sisters right now. The Holy Spirit will set you free from your sinful, whatever sinful activity you're doing. It does come to set you free. But sometimes people wind up saying to themselves, I was more happier living in sin than I was, than I am right now. And so, you know, because of that, you know, not realizing, well, who is influencing you to think that the sin that was destroying your chances of having eternal life, who is influencing you that your life was better on as you were on the way to hell than living the life, uh, being cleansed and being being set free from all of that? Obviously, it's the same demonic spirit that had a hold on you for so long. Now that you've been set free, that demonic spirit is trying to call you back. And successfully does call a lot of people back because why? Because we, as the church body, don't want to discuss demon possession for real. You know, even if you do talk about demon possession, there's another demonic spirit that wants you to make you think I'm talking about um, uh, Exorcist, the the movie Exorcist, where, the, where, where whatever her name was, was spinning her head around and spitting pea soup out of her mouth. No, I'm not talking about those demonic spirits and demon possession, but I am getting into one thing. You know, a lot of people don't even think people with psychiatrists and everything, oh, it's not. It's a mental problem. They're not possessed by demons. It's no such thing as demonic spirits. And all. That's all make-believe. Well, if it's all make-believe, you know, that's and, and you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, but you won't accept this part of Jesus Christ into your heart. Well, is Jesus make-believe? Would you go so far as to say that? Because Jesus showed some anger here when the disciples didn't have. I don't know if y'all ever seen a mustard seed, but a mustard seed is very small. They did not have a mustard seed of faith to cast out these demonic spirits. And Jesus said, how long am I going to stay with you unfaithful people? That's what he said. Our master, our savior, right? But I am going to tell you one thing. You know, look at all of these crazy crimes that have taken place and are still taking place. Demon Legion says he had he has I'm called Legion because I have many names. Has anybody ever considered that suicide, which is a sin in the Bible? I just said every sin has a demonic spirit attached to it. Has anybody ever said anything about the people who commit suicide? Maybe the reason, just like this man said about his son, he has touched terrible fits. He often falls into the fire or into the water, meaning he's often doing something that will get him killed. He's trying to kill himself. How many people, how many psychiatrists are going to... Sit here, right here, right here, Matthew chapter 17. He's saying, Jesus is saying, that that's a demonic spirit. And how come the church, we're not praying, you got these suicide prevention people telling you to do all this other kind of stuff that does not work. I, I, I work in the hospital. They tell you to do all this other kind of stuff. Oh, don't upset the person. And, and try to be nice. Try to be calm. And they have all of these unchristian like all of these plans and and procedures for delirium and all this other kind of stuff the the majority of the time what they do was they'll put you on some debilitating drug and they will drug you up this will not cure you of your your symptoms even people who commit suicide and keep committing suicide the answer most psychologists have keep them drugged up Keep them halfway asleep and give them something like Ativan or something that's just going to warp their mind. And your child or your loved one is going to have to keep taking this medication. Matter of fact, I believe bipolarism and all the, the, the 
cancers and everything else that um, doctors still don't have a cure for. You know, the, the mental illnesses that, that people don't have a cure for. I know you, you got your CAT scan and everything. We, we found physical evidence that there's a, a, a spot in the person's brain that is dead and, um, and deteriorated. And that particular part of the brain took care of this particular body function or mental function. And since that person... Um, as we can see on the CAT scan and everything, that that particular part of the brain has died. That is why your loved one is sitting there acting a fool. You know, uh, bottom line, that's what they, that's what the hospitals tell you. And we've invented a drug. We've invented, we've come up with, we found a plant or herb that, that we can create this drug to dope up your loved one so they never come to, to, to any consciousness They'll always be sleep, doped up, pooping on themselves and peeing on themselves, whatever the, ca the case may be. And it becomes your responsibility to clean up after them until they die. But, you know, it would be inhumane and humanized if you didn't give them these drugs because I, the doctor, prescribed these drugs for you because we just can't, we just can't have these people hurting themselves or hurting somebody else because of that. That's true. But you will not hear a doctor except for Dr. Jesus say, if you have the trust as tiny as a mustard seed, you will be able to say to this mountain, move this whatever, whatever. The mountain that he's talking about, whatever demonic spirit that has taken control over you or your loved one, if you have enough faith as a mustard seed, and, you, and if you feel like you don't have enough faith as a mustard seed, ask Jesus to give it to you. Now, I, I may have spoken too fast, and you may not have heard me, so I'm going to slow down. If you don't feel that you have faith enough as a mustard seed to move these demonic forces out of your life, or out of your, your loved one's life, pray. And ask Jesus to give it to you. But but, but even more than that. Pray and fast. Even more than that. You've got to stop a lot resisting the Holy Spirit. If it's you. Who can't seem to knock. You can't knock it off. You know those psychiatrists and things. I just thought about another thing. They, they'll say. Oh my. Uh, your problems are smaller than you. You just think your problems are bigger than you, and that's why you can't conquer them. Well, I'm here to tell you, well, Jesus, I'm telling you, take it as the Holy Spirit telling you through me. Your problems are bigger than you. Your situations, your circumstances, yes, they are bigger than you. I, I, I just learned this myself because, you know, I was always saying that the first airplane ride I took and I looked down... Um, at the city when I was leaving New York City and I saw how small New York City was I thought my problems were so big uh, but I saw how small they really were and how big the world is that's what I was saying but you know I'm I, I realized maybe somebody might have interpreted that as your problems are smaller than you smaller than you think and all of this other kind of stuff and therefore you shouldn't cry or complain but I wasn't even realizing myself, brothers and sisters. No, my problems are bigger than me. My search of all the things sinful about me, because I just said it's a demonic spirit holding holding on to that. Whatever that is, yes, they are bigger than me. And I apologize to any of you out here if I'm talking too long and you're saying, well, what's going on here? You know, this this podcast is so long and everything. I'm talking, but the Holy Spirit wants me to get this out to you. And and I can't stop or prohibit the Holy Spirit, please. You know, and I'm asking you, look, don't let that demonic spirit of hurry up <laughs> make you want to. You can always, if this is too long for you, if you're at work, if you're at you're someplace like that, let me remind you right now. You can always hit the pause button or and come back to the rest of this, this particular discussion later. But 
the Lord told me to get this out and I'm getting it out. You know, um, that, you know, I make the plan, but God controls the steps. OK, so so please don't don't let that demonic spirit of frustration make you think, oh, he's talking too long and all that stuff. I might as well just stay in my sin because he's talking too long. No, don't even don't even go there. You know, you're doing yourself a, a disservice if that's what you're thinking right now. Go ahead. Pause. Come back to hear the rest of it later. That's all I can tell you. OK, I I didn't think it would be this long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brothers and sisters, I didn't think it would be this long. And usually I, I put breaks in between, but the Lord is telling me not to put breaks in between. Getting back to what I'm talking about now. Okay, so so this is what I'm talking about, demonic spirits. You know, demonic spirits. When that man went up there and busted out that hotel window and began to rain bullets down on people. And to this day, because he killed himself, this day is... They say those psychiatrists and those experts, they say, well, we just have no way of knowing what what that man was doing because he never had a medical record. He never had he never had anything. We, a police report. The police would never call to his house. So what made him possessed him to go get see that word possess? Right. They'll say that word, but they don't understand what that word means. That means you've been possessed by a demonic spirit. You know, what possessed him to go up there and do something like that? Or we will never know what that person that that shot up that Walmart down there in, was it Texas? We will never know what, 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 what he was thinking because he killed himself. And then uh, even people who have shot up, come into the church and shot people in the church. We don't know. Well, all we know that this brother was... This brother was a, a brother in the church. He attended church and he was a brother here and there. That happened right here in Tennessee. Uh, he was a brother in the church, but we don't know why he came and shot people like that. Yes, you do know why, because Matthew chapter 17 right here tells us why. But when you hear Christian talking like that, I have to ask the question. I'm not condemning anybody. I just have to ask you the question. How come even on when the news reporter asked you, no one said maybe he was demon possessed. Maybe that guy that shot up the came in and shot people in the church. Even that young man, I don't care if he said he was a racist. And that uh, I think it was Washington D.C. He shot the pastor and shot people. He brought a gun into the church to kill folk. He can say all he want to. To me, I, I mean, in, in my from my understanding, he can say all he want to that that he did it in the name of of the white people and all that stuff, but. As far as I'm concerned, the young man was possessed by a demon, walked up into that church, and them cops and everybody else probably possessed by a demon too. Why? Because, I mean, you know, I don't care who it is, what would possess you to take the young man to go get a hamburger after he just shot up some people? And it's supposed to be your job to arrest people and lock them away until they can see a lawyer have a trial you know you're supposed to take them directly to the police precinct but you did not and i don't care what color the man young man was why did all that happen no one i mean no one no christian that i heard said anything about not only was this young boy possessed with demons, but these cops that do these things that they do are possessed with demons also. And these demonic spirits are running rampant. Why? Because a large amount of the Christian church, my brothers and sisters in the faith, we do not want to discuss this. We do not want to look appear crazy but we get up in the churches and we'll talk about anything else except for demonic spirits over sinful behavior, over suicide, over murder, suicide, over the things that psychiatrists and all these people who don't accept or acknowledge Jesus Christ as anything but a teacher cannot give you the answer to because they do not believe. They, they have not accepted, they have not acknowledged that Jesus is real and that 
demonic spirits are real too. Now when I've spoken about demonic spirits all this time, it's taken me an hour. But I, what I want to do, because I said demonic spirits and the Holy Spirit, I'm going to read uh, John chapter 13. I'm going to read something out of John chapter 13. And yes, because I don't want this to go too far, I'll read it and then we will discuss it. The Holy Spirit. My plan is, unless God says something else, my plan is to discuss the Holy Spirit in episode 10. I don't want it to go that long either because um, I think the networks like that will cut me off anyway. And I don't want it to go up too long uh, either. I don't want to be cut off. Or if I do get cut off, brothers and sisters, we'll take up um, we'll take up John chapter 13 in the next. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to John chapter 13 and start from there. John chapter 13, verse... Let's see. Am I in John chapter 13? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Hard of Korea aware. Okay, so we'll, we'll John 13, we'll look at the um, first part of it. Um, the first couple of verses. And it says here, it was just before uh, verse 1, the festival of Pesach. And Yeshua knew that the time had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. Having loved his own people uh, in the world, he loved them to the end. They were at supper, verse 2. And the adversary had already put the desire, see, the devil can put desires into people's hearts that were going out chasing out demons because Judas was chasing demons out too. And already put the desire to betray him in his heart of Judah ben Shimon from Kriot. Yeshua was aware that the Father had put everything in his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he rose from the table, removed his outer garments, and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the Talmudim and wiped them off with the towel wrapped around him. He came to Shimon Kepha, that's Peter, who said to him, Lord, you are washing my feet? Yeshua answered him, You do not understand yet what I am doing, but in time you will understand. No, said Kepha, or Kepha, or Peter, whatever your Bible says. You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered to him, If you don't, if I don't wash you, you have no share with me. Lord Shimon Kepha replied, Not only my feet, but my hands and head too. Yeshua said to him, A man who has had a bath doesn't need to wash except his feet. His body is already clean. And if you people are clean, but not all of you, he knew who was going to betray him. This is why he had said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed his feet. Okay. Excuse me. You, okay. Wash his feet. His body is uh, already clean. And you people are clean, but not all of you. Okay. We'll leave it at there. And then we'll pick it up back in, in um, chapter, I mean, in, in episode 10. But what I wanted to say is that particular scripture right there 13 i know you 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 probably have not heard 
mentioning of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, okay, with that chapter, most of the time when people read chapter 13 of John, they want to point out how humble Jesus was that even though he was the Messiah, he got down there like a servant and cleaned people's feet. I know you've, you've heard that because that, and, and people are so amazed. Oh, Jesus the servant, Jesus the servant. But they don't pay attention. Most people I have encountered or heard from, I'm not going to say everybody, but most people I have in, in my life never mention that part where Jesus says, or never even speak about that part where Jesus says, if you don't allow me to wash you, basically, you really have no part with me. You don't belong to me if you don't let me wash you. And we'll get into that. We'll get into the anointing of the Holy Spirit and how even if we have accepted Jesus in our heart, we still, and he has sent the Holy Spirit comforter to grow us up and mature us like uh, my brother uh, Glory Manuel had wrote the book about. We get resistant and we won't let the Holy Spirit uh, wash us and cleanse us and, and do the things. And we'll get in, in, into more discussion in, in um, episode 10. So I'm going to pray out right now, Father. Heavenly Father, we'll come to you right now, sweet name of Jesus Christ, saying thank you. Thank you for this hour and six minutes. Uh, thank you, Lord, for giving us this time. I hope and pray that the networks like iHeartRadio and, and others do not cut this short at 60 minutes or whatever the case may be. I hope and pray that uh, the listeners, everybody listening to this, everyone who receives this particular uh, this particular episode, episode nine, are reconsidering the things, the terrible things that have happened in their life, even though they know they're calling on you. Maybe it's because they have not yet accepted demons and demonic spirits as a part of something that the Holy Spirit is supposed to get us out of. Maybe they haven't accepted that and they don't want people to think they're crazy. So they haven't allowed you to teach them about this. Or maybe they have it in their minds that exorcist movie where the girl is spitting out pea soup. So every time somebody talks about demon possession in the past, maybe some brothers and sisters in Christ have not separated that from their mind and, and, and realized that we're not talking about that. We're talking about real demon possession and demons don't and how demons don't really expose themselves, but they can they hide themselves deep down in people's hearts. So maybe they haven't accepted that, Father, but I pray that by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you give me a mustard seed of faith that I'm telling these mountain these demonic mountains to move out of my life, out of my children's life, and out in and, and my wife and children's life, out from around us, out from around the house, out from all my loved ones, Father, and even all of my listeners. If they can't have a faith of mustard seed, I'm asking you, Lord, to give me a faith of the, enough of a mustard seed to, that I can say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command all these demons to move out of people's lives. So that they can be filled and anointed with your Holy Spirit, Father. This is our pray and ask in Jesus' name as we close out. And thank all of you for taking the time to listen all the way through this particular podcast. If anybody, I hear anybody say, oh, it was too long. It was too long-winded, all that kind of stuff. Well, I even pray for you. I, I pray that you... Go back, come back and listen through it all the way through so that you can receive what the Holy Spirit wants you to receive about this message. This I pray in Jesus' name. And thank you all and good night. Oh yes, and, and uh, stay tuned for my video cast, the next episode, number two.